Ben Hardy was not a painter. He was the owner and manager of Ben's Diner, a favorite restaurant in the small town Ivesville, Arkansas. Ben's wife was his restaurant. His family was all the townsfolk of Ivesville, each of which Ben knew personally by name. Over the years, Ben had become a highly respected and beloved member of the community. It may go without saying, but painting was of no interest to him. Tom Wilson had been his best friend since 1941 and had never once seen Ben even pick up a paintbrush. As far as Tom was concerned, Ben was born to run his diner. It was open from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Ben had never closed his diner for any personal reasons. Not even holidays affected his schedule. And yet, one summertime week, the restaurant remained closed. It was a normal Wednesday. Ben's customers were puzzled. But it was, after all, only one day. Then Thursday arrived. Then Friday. The diner did not open. At this point, Tom had become worried about Ben. Tom tried calling Ben's home several times that night, but there was no answer. Should I just go see him? Tom thought to himself. It was a small town. Ben didn't live far. Pulling up to Ben's home, Tom noticed all the lights were out, but Ben's car was parked in the driveway. Tom went up to the door and rang the doorbell. The house was silent. Another ring. Still, no movement could be heard from inside. Tom felt something. Something wrong. He turned the doorknob. The door was unlocked. He walked inside, his eyes trying to adjust to the darkness. Tom walked deeper into the house. When he passed the living room, he noticed someone sitting on the couch. Slowly, he reached inside the room and flipped on the light switch. Ben? The dark figure was Ben. Tom? Ben's gaze remained forward. What are you doing? Tom asked. As Tom crept closer, he noticed that Ben's television was knocked over. You haven't been answering my calls, Ben. Your dine has been closed since Tuesday. People are starting to talk. We're worried about you. Look what I made. Ben pointed forward. Tom looked up and in place of the television, he saw a newly painted portrait. It was the portrait of a man. An exceedingly detailed portrait of an exceedingly plain man. He nearly disregarded the piece entirely, but Tom paused at the sight of it. The painting had something about it. It made him feel uncomfortable to look at but he found it was difficult to avert his gaze. As he stared at the portrait, his uneasiness grew. Tom had to force his eyes back to Ben, struggling to keep them from the painting. Ben, what is this? <sighs> My painting. What do you think? The nonchalant response pricked Tom, further concerning him. What do you mean, your painting? I had to paint it. Ben, I've known you for nearly 20 years. You don't paint. Tom was surprised by how agitated he felt. To make matters worse, Ben's attitude, or lack thereof, was not what Tom had expected. He was too dazed. He lacked his usual zest. Adding to his discomfort, Tom's eyes were repeatedly pulled back to the painting. With each new glance, the portrait began filling him with a strange dread. At his side, Ben's gaze never left the painting. I had to, Tom. Ben, you don't just wake up and paint something like this out of the blue. It's too detailed. There's no way you could have made this yourself. Ben had no reaction to Tom. Ben. Ben! Sit with me, Tom. Tom reluctantly sat on the couch, focusing his eyes on his friend. Ben, is this all you've been doing these past few days? Without facing Tom, Ben answered, Just today, I was at the diner yesterday. Ben, it's Friday night. 
You haven't been in since Tuesday. Friday? There was a stretch of silence. I'll come in tomorrow. Ben, eyes glazed over with an unconscious stare, responded dryly. For a moment, Tom lost his focus on Ben and accidentally looked back at the painting, and something in the back of his mind started screaming at him. This portrait was... predacious. That was it. He knew he had to leave now. Hastily standing, Tom said, Alright Ben, I'm leaving. I'll try to drop by the diner tomorrow, see if you're alright. There was no reply from Ben, but Tom didn't wait. Tom quickly left, but the feeling of danger persisted. Even as he drove away, Tom still didn't feel safe. Tom had nightmares that night. He didn't know where he was. He was completely alone. All he could hear was screaming. He knew he was dreaming, but he could not wake up. Eventually, he was awoken by his concerned wife, Anna. She told him he had been thrashing and crying out. Tom couldn't sleep after that. The face of the painting was all he could think about. He felt his mind was on the edge of unraveling. Even though he had only seen the painting a few hours ago, to Tom it felt like years. He could not stay there. Anywhere would do, anywhere but Ivesville. As soon as the sun rose, he hastily packed his bag and ran out the door. He did not say a word to Anna, he just left. The further he drove, the clearer his mind became. Nearing the city limits, the feeling of safety was finally returning. As he began to relax, Tom glanced at his rearview mirror, and all at once felt the fear rush back into him. There, on the side of the road, he saw an unassuming, plain-looking man slowly waving him down. Tom tore his eyes away from the mirror and floored the gas pedal. He did not stop until he was out of the state. That morning, before the sun had even risen, a dark figure could be seen walking towards Ben's diner holding a large parcel. Arriving at the restaurant, the haggard visage of Ben slowly unlocked the door and fumbled inside. Ben made his way to the cashier's island, climbed up, and hung his painting in full view of the lobby. Ben lowered himself back to the ground and pulled up a chair. Dawn creeped out of the night, and the usual Saturday crowd slowly approached Ben's diner. The patrons tried to stay and eat their breakfast, but there was something in the air. Many of the customers left before they were served. Others tried to persevere, but even their servers were acting strangely. Somehow, everyone inside Ben's diner found their attention pulled to one singular location. Unbeknownst to them, they were in the unseen grasp of the extraordinarily plain man. 8 p.m. came and went. Ben had many patrons that day, but as quickly as the diner had filled up, so too was it emptied. He was by himself now, but he wasn't alone. He had his painting. The sun rose once again on Ivesville, Arkansas. Just like every other Sunday, the pews of the town church were filled. But on this Sunday, one thing was missing. Ben Hardy was not at church. Ben had always made it a point to close shop every Sunday, the Lord's Day. Word spread fast. The townsfolk began to wonder where Ben had gone. There was rumor that he had done something to his diner. Maybe that's where he was? That was the consensus many of the townspeople reached on that fateful Sunday. And sure enough, he was there. Many churchgoers and passerbys wandered into the diner, believing it to be a special occasion. More and more people began to fill the diner during its surprise opening. As more filed in, Ben was repeatedly questioned about the artwork on the wall. Many of the customers were unnerved by its presence, but Ben remained silent and unnaturally peaceful, even as those who surrounded him grew more and more hysteric. 
the hysteria began to spread through Ivesville like a plague. Three days later, on the empty interstate leading into Arkansas, Tom apprehensively made his way back home. The time away had allowed him to collect himself, making him realize how foolish he'd been to leave his wife. He wasn't sure what was wrong with the painting, but what he knew for certain was that he had left her there with it. As he approached his hometown, a car zoomed past him in the opposite direction. Then another car followed, and another. Tom's attention was now fully on the passing traffic. There was a frenzy of cars weaving in and out of each other, leaving the city. Tom jumped in his seat as he saw a truck collide with a station wagon, but neither vehicle stopped. They just kept driving. As Tom watched the fleet of hysteric drivers, their panic spread to him. He drove home as fast as he could. As he pulled into his suburb, the entire street was littered with the personal belongings of his neighbors. Tom's next door neighbors were hastily packing up their van while their children were crying on the lawn. Pulling up to his home, he saw that his front door was thrown wide open. Tom rushed in and desperately called for his wife. He ran through each room of the house, searching for any sign of her. When he got to their bedroom, he noticed her belongings strewn across the room. Tom called out again, but again there was no answer. He checked everywhere, top to bottom, but she was nowhere to be found. Tom had taken their only car, so where could she have gone? There was only one person that Anna and he were close friends with, and that was Ben Hardy. His heart was pounding and beads of sweat soaked his face as he raced down the street towards Ben's house. Tom was driving too fast for such a small street, but he didn't care. He saw Ben's diner coming up on his left hand side, and just happened to catch a silhouette inside waving him down. That must be Ben! Tom thought as he slammed on the brakes. He got out of his car and made his way into the diner, finding the lone figure of Ben sitting down, facing the portrait in front of him. Tom shielded his eyes from the painting. Carefully, he walked in front of Ben and was aghast at his appearance. Ben was skeletal. His skin was greasy and pale, hair matted, beard unkempt, eyes dried up, lips cracked, and a thick rotting odor surrounded him like miasma. Ben, what happened to you? What, what's going on? Have you seen Anna? Has she come by here? Tom asked in a fervor. Ben didn't answer, keeping his cracked eyes trained on the portrait. Ben, have you seen Anna? Tom yelled. There was a moment of silence. She came by, Ben said in a quiet exhale. Where is she? Tom said, trying to contain his anxiety. Ben didn't answer. Ben! Tom grabbed Ben by the shoulders and began to shake him. Ben's body felt like it was breaking at Tom's touch but still he kept his eyes on the portrait. Fine. Contempt, concern, and confusion filled Tom. In a fury, he practically flew up onto the countertop. He aggressively took hold of the painting and tried to rip it from the wall, but the painting wouldn't move. It resisted. Shocked, Tom turned and unintentionally came face to face with the portrait. And for one split second, the painting ceased to be just a painting. Words alone cannot fully express what happened to Tom. He simply ceased to be. Four days later, Ivesville sat empty. There were no children in the schools. The buildings were vacant. The streets were quiet. The homes were void, but still, Ben Hardy remained in his diner, only joined by his portrait. He did not move, he did not blink, nor make a sound. Ben was simply there, breathing, ever enraptured.
from behind, a plain hand rested itself on Ben's shoulder. Slowly, Ben turned away from the portrait, and a small welcoming smile grew on his face. Round two. A little bit harder than the first time. <laughs> and Daredevil, he was like, round two. He was like, oh, man. Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, this was the second time we... <laughs> for those who don't. Just everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, because we... This is... Te- is this like the second or technically the third time, I guess? Because the, the first recording today, mm-hmm. it cut off like... Oh. Because that 30 minute cap. Yeah, just some um, technical issues and yeah, cut off because technical we, we issues went too compounding long. on top of story issues. Yeah, th- this it's taken us two whole years to write this story, <laughs> basically because we wrote it and then we rewrote it and we perfected those those uh, well, details and then we kind of yeah. you know we just we just kept trying to like I'm so Im- like, improve it. You know, yeah. we took our time with it. We didn't rush it for the you most part. Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We took a Big, yeah. Uh, I think we actually just straight up took a year break because we, we wrote the almost the entirety of it last June, June of 2020. And then, wow, this June, it's literally June right now, except 2021. <laughs> That's wild, bro. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a couple of long sessions, long writing sessions. Um, hopefully, it's enjoyable to an extent. Yeah, uh, I hope you guys liked it. I would love to look at the camera right now, but we're just silhouettes. <laughs> well, you can look at the camera. Yeah, but then it's just <laughs> our face disappears. <laughs> <laughs> and like low, low key, you can't even tell. Am I looking at the camera or away from? Wait, it? look away from the camera. Because <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. Oh, that's great. <laughs> but no. Yeah. It, it it definitely took a while, but I did have a really good time writing the story and mm-hmm. the the whole process. Definitely look forward to the next one and the next yeah, one. Yeah, this one um, was it's probably going to be like an anomaly in the way it was created. Um, Just from like, now on. like the portrait. Because I remember it came about because we were at like well like ihop or pf changs or something like that i think it was pf changs i'm almost certain it was pf changs and you had brought up there was this japanese i think it was a manga like a horror manga so oh that, my that you god read. oh it was, my god junji ito i it, and it was an entire town or something like that it was they got obsessed with the or, spiral with the spiral yeah. and it was you were like yo that's crazy and then Oh you my know, god, you remember that? I don't even remember that. Yeah, I mean, I was like, man, a spiral? And then, I don't, yada yada. Somehow, we came up with, what if it was a portrait, mm-hmm. a really detailed portrait of, mm-hmm. you know, a really plain man, and it was painted by someone who would never paint. So yeah. then that's kind of, and then from there, that, it yeah, kind of. Add, that adds the mystery of it, you know. From there, it spiraled. Ah. Uh, uh, into the story that we created cutting and, that out <laughs> and, no, into the story that we created and it was um and it was, it was kind of it was fun you know like if if this is what's going on then xyz and stuff you know so that and was, i feel like we really did try to keep it as sh- as short and sweet as possible yeah um, didn't want to go too far we we have like a bunch of like background in our heads that we have not included in the story like how tom and ben met Mm -hmm. um their 20 years like what it looked like um and i was we've talked about you know eventually if we ever get the resources turn this into a short film yeah which i'm sure we will you know Yeah, yeah, yeah all we really need is a diner a town a bunch of cars a truck um, a painting of somebody of a really boring looking man. The painting would probably be the hardest thing to nail. 
we could listen all we need to do all we need to do for the painting is not show it i shit you not okay we could show it i you know what i picture no. i picture fucking the doll from brahm oh as a real person as a real life like 45 year old man but just mm -hmm. it's just a painting or we could just not show it or we could show it i feel like the it would be smarter to obscure it mm -hmm. like Zack Snyder shallow depth of field whenever it's in the room. That would be dope. We could obscure the we could never show the painting or just obscure it like you said. And then even when the man comes in at the end and puts his hands on Ben's shoulder, we never see what that man looks like. But it's like oh, we like kind the of witch. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And we must have been thinking of that scene when we wrote that. We had I, to have. Right. May I wouldn't be surprised because it's a great movie, but I I don't remember thinking of it. It's like straight it, up the it, same. It was a whole ass year ago. It was. Yeah, it was just cool creating a story where the there's clearly something wrong here, but nobody knows what it is or where it came from, which and, and no one's prepared for it. Because no it just comes out it. of nowhere. And yeah. that that adds to the, the horror of it mm -hmm. because there's no real origin it kind of just came into existence almost mm -hmm. it literally willed itself to be made into existence one random Sheesh. wednesday a part of me wants to think like if this was expanded into like a longer story instead of a 10 page a cinematic short, universe um i would kind of want to delve into like how long it takes to affect the town maybe instead mm -hmm. of just like within a week it slowly like just creeps its way into the town and everything just becomes kind of fucked up maybe it happens over even like years actually i kind of like the idea of maybe like months at the most mm -hmm. and maybe um maybe it could be seen through the perspective of tom leaves on an actual business trip like a long one and he comes back and things are just kind of funky and he's like what i i would just went to a meeting out of state what just what what's going on i was gone for a day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like he goes to visit ben and the diner is closed he's like okay what where's ben he goes to look for ben and finds him at his home kind of incorporates what we have in this story like mm -hmm. kind of that interaction but um just larger scale how like you just see how it affects this small town there are multiple characters like not just ben tom there's like kind of just an ensemble just you see the different aspects maybe like one of the characters is a little kid and you see how it's like affecting school maybe it's like the mayor, you see like how it's affecting the broad strokes of the town itself. This like, this nothing town, this little town of like nowhere is like turning into hell. It's like, how is this happening? Yeah. A painting? <laughs> huh? <laughs> ben Hardy's not even a painter. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this is honestly like the condensed milk form. Yeah, Ben, ben Hardy, Hardy was, was not, not a, a painter. painter, and cut. <laughs>